Hi there. Today we're going to deal with analog inputs to the Arduino. I'm going to start out with uh, a schematic. We've got our 5 volts coming in from the Arduino and uh, ground coming from Arduino. And before we actually get to uh, explaining analog inputs, I think I need to introduce a concept called the voltage divider. Because a voltage divider is what you're going to need to set up in order for the analog sensor to be read properly by the uh, Arduino. Now in the in the uh, previous videos when we had a digital switch we had to keep it from floating by either putting a 10k resistor either high up to 5 volts or low to uh, ground in order to keep the uh, the pin on the Arduino uh, from floating uh, around between 0 and 5 volts. So you need something to, to hold it there to keep it from uh, giving false readings. That's similar to a voltage divider, but a voltage divider is an analog concept. And what it actually is, it's two, usually two, resistors. Um, the first resistor will, let's see, we'll put it here. And the second we'll put here. Now, depending on what kind of sensor you're using, this is what you would use if you would use a sensor that uses a resistive sensing. For example, a CDS cell or a light cell. It's a cadmium sulfide. And it looks like one of these. Let's see if we can bring this up so that you can focus it and focus it and see it a little in a little more detail. Yeah, so that's our cadmium sulfide cell. And it accepts light and it changes its resistance based on the amount of light that's available. Our second resistor is the divider. And it's usually, in this case, for this type of cell, it's a 10K resistor. This will give us a good range of values between uh, very bright light and, and darkness. And then from this center point, you then go back to one of the analog pins, either 0 to 5, A0 to A5. And this is what you would pick up. And this will give you, depending on how you set it up and what kind of cell you use and what kind of resistor you use, this should give a range of values between 0 and 5 volts, or roughly in between there. And so it will give a value somewhere in in that range. It will never go below 0 volts, 
and it can never go higher than 5 volts because you're only feeding at 5 volts. The voltage divider will give you something less than 5 volts. So if the resistance is very, very low in the cadmium sulfide cell, then it will allow a higher voltage to travel through to the analog pins. Conversely, if this is a very high voltage, it will not let much of the high voltage through, and the 10K resistor will have more effect and bring the voltage that's coming out of here down towards ground. So let's, let's see if we can build that circuit, and we'll test it with the multi-tester, and then... Uh, and then apply um, an Arduino sketch to it. So we're going to connect up the cadmium sulfide cell to the plus 5 voltage that we're getting from Arduino. Then we'll take a 10K resistor and we'll run it down to the minus of the Arduino. So we've got a voltage divider here, and we'll pick up our sensor at the junction between the resistor and the cadmium sulfide cell. So we'll get a trusty multi-tester. Put some leads up to it. Now to the for the minus, we're, uh, we're measuring the voltage relative to the ground. So our multi-tester black probe goes to ground, and then we can actually pick, pick this off here. We could also get it from here, but Get it from there. Turn our voltage on. And our current voltage with the voltage divider as it is, with the light as it is, gives us 4.4 volts. If I put my hand over it, it goes down to about 1.1. If I move my hand up a little bit, it's 3.9 back up to four. You shine another light on it, a really bright light. It goes up to 4.83. So this would be similar to sunlight, and that would be similar to night. If you wanted to have a low voltage with low light, all you have to do is switch these two around. So let's try that. So we'll take our resistor and we'll put it where the cadmium sulfide cell was by attaching it to the uh, plus 5. And then we'll take our cadmium sulfide cell and we'll connect it to ground on one side and the resistor on the other. And then we'll check our voltage. So now we're looking at uh, light which is uh, high lots of light and it's giving us a low reading 
if we put if I put my hand over it, it's uh, a high 3.5 volts, 3.6 volts. So it just depends on how you put the sensor. The sensor is giving us a variable reading. So if you want it to show lots of light and high voltage, you put it on the high side, like so. And if you want it to work the opposite way, you just swap the components. Now here it's actually, it can sense the amount of light that's actually coming through my finger. I have to put my whole hand on it to get a much lower reading. Okay, put this away. And now we'll apply a sketch to the same circuit. My sketch uses analog A0 as the sensor, so we'll connect that up and we'll zip over to our recording uh, display. So here's the sketch. It's called CDS Demo. I create two variables, or two, actually they're constants in this case. It's an integer, and it defines the CDS pin as zero, so that's analog zero, and the LED pin as pin 13. So we'll actually see it on the uh, Arduino device. We have only one thing in the setup. It's to set the LED pin to output. We have to do this for the digital pins, but we don't have to do it for the analog pins because the analog pins are input only. Then we have a loop. So what this loop will do is it will set the LED high, and then it will read the, uh, our circuit to see what the voltage level is, and it will delay based on the reading that it gets from the cadmium sulfide cell. So then it delays a certain amount, and then it turns the light low, and then we will get another delay also based on the level of voltage as indicated by the analog zero from the cadmium sulfide pin. So in other words, the LED that's on the Arduino device will flash faster or slower depending on the light level that's received. So let's uh, verify that. And we'll check to see that we've got the right board and we've got the right serial port. Let's upload it. Okay. You can see the LED is flashing maybe once a second. I'm going to put my hand on this and we'll see it's going a little faster. It goes quite fast. Try 
my flashing light on it. So it's going flashing quite slowly now. So you get the idea. So what is it that it's sensing? What happens when we go from the voltage through to the A0 pin on the Arduino? What happens with the Arduino? Well, the Arduino is taking that voltage between 0 and 5 volts and it's doing what's called an analog to digital conversion. And uh, the conversion translates the 0 to 5 volts to a number between 0 and 1023. And so the number of milliseconds that this blinking light is delaying is actually a number between 0 and, and 1023. 5 volts will give us a delay of about 1 second and 0 volts will give us a delay of like 1 millisecond. Now we can we can't, by just looking at the, uh, the light, determine what that number is, but we can go back into the sketch and uh, change the sketch so that we can look at that number through the, uh, the uh, serial output. So to do that, In our setup, we do serial begin and we do the ninety six hundred baud. And uh, mm -hmm. Integer reading actually we'll call it something different. We'll call it analog to digital equals Do a serial print line analog to digital. So here we've set up the serial port. We've created an integer within the loop, and we've call we're calling it analog to digital, and we're reading the. Uh, cadmium sulfide pin A0, then we'll print it out using the serial port, serial monitor here, and, and then we'll do our, the rest of, of our tricks. So we'll still flash the light at various rates. Let's see if that verifies. Okay. seems to be working. Let's change the baud rate to 9600. 
Okay, so it's currently reading a number of around 900. I'm going to put my hand over the sensor now. And it's now giving us 400s. And I've taken my hand off and I'm going to shine a flashlight on it. See if we can get it higher than 900. There's uh, 1,000. So these values you can then translate back, if you want, to a voltage. Right, so how would we do that? So, the situation is that we have a, an integer value from 0 to 1023. And this is representing actually 0 to 5.0 volts. So the way we do this is we take our analog reading and we multiply it by 5, and then we divide it by 1023. And that should give us our voltage. So let's try that. So we had, uh, what was it? The highest was 1011 times 5 divided by 1023. That's about a 4.94 uh, volts. We had also a value of around 400. times 5 divided by 1023. That was about 1.9 volts. We could go back and we could check that on the multi-tester and those values would be quite uh, quite similar. The analog to digital conversion on the Arduino is quite accurate. The last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, different kinds of variables and constants. So uh, I have our cheat sheet here somewhere. There it is. Here's the Arduino cheat sheet. You can get this um, from a link on the course website. You should have this uh, Everybody should have one of these. The area that I want to point out is first of all the constants and then we'll get to the data types. With constants, constants are values that you can drop into your sketch and the uh, Arduino IDE will accept them as representing certain values. So you can express high or low and it will interpret that as being either a 1 or a 0. You could also say true or false. True could be would be represented as 1 and false as 0. If you express a constant as, a, as a, just a decimal number, it's interpreted as a decimal number. If you want to express, and there might be some reason why you would want to do this, in some cases, if you want to express a binary number, you have to precede it by 0b. And then you have the ones and zeros, and that's interpreted as a binary number. We ran into a hex number uh, a couple of videos back, 
it's expressed using a 0x in front of it and then the number after it. Hexadecimal number uses uh, has 16 values before it resets from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So that's why you have a letter here. There are some other ones which are not as useful. You can look at those uh, at your leisure. The other section that I want to talk about is, are the data types. You can have a Boolean data type, which is similar to a constant. You can express a 0, a 1, false or true. They will all be interpreted as uh, false will be 0, true will be 1. You can have a car or a character. The ASCII value for a letter can be uh, can be expressed using this. It's a value between minus 128 and plus 127. If you know that your value is going to be in the positive range, you can specify an unsigned car, uh, an unsigned character from 0 to 255. Or you can just say, I want it to be a byte. I want it to be an 8-bit value and it's expressed as a 0 to 255. I can specify an integer. Most of the variables that we've uh, defined in our sketches have been integers and they can be anything from minus 32,768 to plus 32,767. The reason we might want to use a byte rather than an int integer is that bytes use less space on the controller chip, microcontroller chip. So the microcontroller chip has a certain amount of space for variables and it's limited. So if you've got a big sketch, you might need to econom economize in various ways. And one of those ways would be to look at the range of numbers that you're or the range of values that you're uh, working with in your sketch and use only the size that you need and don't use a data type which uh, wastes space. You can have an unsigned integer that goes from 0 to 65,000. A word is basically the same thing as an unsigned integer. Then you've got other things like floats. If you're doing complex temp trigonometry, you'd probably want to use floats, but floats use a lot of variable space in the microcontroller. So you want to avoid floats wherever you can and only use them where you need them.